In this visual representation, we have an orange rectangle symbolizing an application binary or a process loaded in memory. The procedure linkage table is located within the code segment of virtual address space. The top few elements are designated for dynamic linker. Meanwhile, at the bottom, you can see we have global offset table, which also reserves some entries for dynamic linker. Keep in mind that every external reference or a call to a function defined outside the application will have a corresponding entry in the PLT or GOT table. Now let's delve deeper into these tables. We'll extract the PLT table from the orange rectangle. And let's draw a new diagram on the left side to clarify its structure. Here the PLT table resides in the code segment of the application. And as mentioned earlier, the first entry is reserved for the dynamic linker. All PLT entries usually have some assembly instruction in them. A simplified set of instructions could be a jump instruction at the top, followed by few instructions which help dynamic linker resolve those unresolved external references. Let's revisit the original diagram from earlier and extract GOT table for a closer examination. As the GOT table addresses are writable, they find their home in the data segment in the binary. The GOT table is usually initialized with addresses during the compilation process. Let's enhance this GOT table in the diagram with some more realistic data to make it more clear. If you observe the first three rows, which are exclusively reserved for dynamic linker, these entries play a crucial ro role in loading the dynamic linker. The fourth index here holds our function fun, which we use later for examination and discuss an example. The initial value here points to the second entry in PLT entry for the same function fun. The significance of this will become soon more clear. Keep in mind an essential aspect of dynamic linkers functionality. Once it resolves an external function or a call, it updates the address entry for that function in GOT table. It directs it directly to the actual memory location of the function and this saves dynamic linker from resolving the same function again for future calls. Now that we have expanded our tables, let's bring them together to form a virtual address space of a running application. Picture this layout. On the left side, we have a loaded application in memory, complete with both data and code segments. The PLT table resides within the code segment while the GOT table is nested inside the data segment. Additionally, there's a bit of a code in the code section that calls the function fun we just talked about. As we have previously mentioned, the function fun has corresponding entries in both PLT and GOT tables. Every time an external function call is made in a running program, such as when we call function fun, the execution leaps to a PLT entry for that function. The first instruction in the PLT entry is a jump instruction, which actually propels us to the location stored in the GOT entry for that function. What that essentially means is that the jump instruction actually uses GOT entry location to jump. As you know, the initial value actually points to the second instruction in the PLT entry. So this jump ultimately leads to the second instruction in the PLT entry. The remaining two entries initiate a call to dynamic linker to resolve this function. The dynamic linker then leaps into action. It loads the library, calls the function, saves the location for future use and updates the GOT table to ensure that future calls to the same function don't require resolution again. Let's delve deeper into the process. On the left side, we have a program or a process loaded into memory and ready for execution. An external function called to fun leads directly into its PLT table entry. As expected, the first instruction invokes a jump a leap into address stored in GOT table for that very function. 
Initially, the address, as we discussed already, points to second instruction in the PLT table entry itself, which proves beneficial when invoking the dynamic linker for the first time. Now, dynamic linker springs into action, locating and loading the library into memory. And following this, in the fourth step, the function execution concludes and the return value is dispatched back to the caller. Simultaneously, the dynamic linker updates the GOT entry for the same function, ensuring it points directly to the address of the function in loaded memory. This streamlined process allows for a more efficient calls and smoother execution of the program in future. From this point forward, all successive calls effortlessly leap straight to the function within the library and returns. It effectively bypasses the costly step of loading the library and relocating the function call.